So our next, uh, next speaker comes from uh, Broomhill, Scott Thompson. He uh, runs a mixed farming operation with a family farm with his wife Lisa and three daughters. He's a fourth generation on the farm. Uh, he's been there for 17 years, shy councillor of Broomhill Tamblup, Diploma of Ag Management at Marcus Oldman. Please welcome Scott Thompson. Thank you, Wes. I also said in that profile, my favourite drink is black tea. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm from Broomhill, south of uh, Katanning. Um, there will be a bit of repetition here, but look, I'm just going to tell you my story of um, controlled traffic. Um, so we're, yeah, we're 80% crop, we've got about 3,000 hectares of, of mixed crops, 4,500 merinos, we're a three to one system, 12 metres, three metre wheel tracks and um, three metre centres and uh, yeah, we started laying our first trams in 2012. So um, uh, that's just a quick history of 15 years ago, I was actually going to go for a nine metre system. Um, why I went controlled traffic? I had no plan, I just, it just made sense. Um, in 07 I bought a 12.2 metre um, air seater. 2010 I bought um, the header front. Um, 2012 I bought my first, uh, the cedar box on three metre axles. And then 2012, I still had a few things not quite right, but I, that was the first year of putting my trams down. Um, so 13, I still had a spreader to put on th three metre axles and, and front wheel assist. Um, that following year, I upgraded to a track machine and then, yeah, just 2016, I did my first track renovation and, and, um, and I put an auger extension on there, which sort of complete the... So it took that long. I'm suggesting I could have done it a shitload quicker if I, if I probably had a plan. And, um, uh, so, yeah, I had no plan. I, uh, day one, I remember getting into the, S, into the paddock with a 40 foot air seater and I didn't know if I was going 12 metres or 40 foot. So I rang up a couple of people, I was in my tractor, I remember this, I don't drive the tractor very often but I was this particular day. And I went to punch in the, number, into the, the figures into the computer and, I, and then I stopped and realised, shit, I don't, know what, I don't know what width I'm going. <laughs> So I made, about th I made a couple of phone calls right there and then and it was my local John Deere dealer. I don't want to give him any credit. He's taken a lot of my money over the years. Um, uh, yeah, he suggested go 12 metres and metric. So that's where, I, but that's where I am today. And So still today I've got a 12.2 metre bar on a 12 metre system. Uh, so yeah, Lane, it was a challenge with no plan. I, I, I was driving around with my iPhone on Google Maps looking at the shapes of paddocks. Um, this is during seeding, um, looking at paddock shapes. Do I go north, west, east, you know, what direction? And um, the outside laps, I'll mention that a number of times because they've been a pain in the ass for, they still are today. They've been a challenge and someone said today that the technology's got better with the new John Deere software. I'm all John Deere and always have been. Um, but they, uh, yeah, I, I've, I'm still getting four paddocks right and one paddock wrong and three paddocks right, one paddock wrong. So there's a lot of human error in there. Um, uh, I do three outside laps around every paddock, doesn't matter if it's five hectares or, or you know, 300 hectares. Um, spreading's been a challenge. I bought a 36, I bought a spreader thinking it was going to do 36 metres and it did 33 metres um, on, you know, at best. Um, and so I've since upgraded to a to a spreader that I'm I'm confident does do 36 metres. Um, my chaser bin, uh, yeah. Uh, what's that? Oh, going through the paddocks. Yeah. So 
if I've got a if I've got a rectangular paddock, for example, and my headers over there, and my and my, my field bins, for example, are, are, are in the middle, I've actually just drawn uh, a, a traffic line straight through the middle, if you like. Um, and yeah, it's a repetitive line. It doesn't matter what angle you go on. Um, and I only use it for the chase bin. I don't use it with a cedar, um, with a sprayer or a spreader in winter because I found that they did they did erode. Um, so yeah, ideally I want the crop to grow on them still. Um, guidance systems. Uh, I, I mean, like I said, I'm always been John Deere. So, so the challenge has just been the John Deere and a, the just the, they all have their challenges and they're all they all have their faults and it's just and it's ongoing and it still is today. Um, and staff, people, that's, well that's our biggest challenge with everything. That's probably why we're not all control traffic today. Um, and yeah, that, 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 that uh, the first year was a pain in the bum. They all, it was, res there was resistance. I resisted it too. You just didn't want to stay on the trams in certain times and you find a spreader that just drives through the middle of the paddock to get back to the gate. And, but it took probably about three years. People could actually physically notice the change. And, um, and they also, well, they also looked like a dickhead when, they, when there was a beautiful, neat system and they drove through the middle of the stubble with a, with a spreader or something. So it, that, it, that just evolved without pushing it too much. So opportunities, these are, these are probably opportunities that I've seen. Rob today, he's touched on many that I'm not even, I'm, you know, he's at least 10 years well ahead of me. Um, RTK, that has just opportunities within itself. You've probably all, plenty of you got RTK. Just the repeatability and driving wherever you want is, is a good advantage. Um, I've got sheep, so I'm moving fences, I'm, I'm I've got contour banks for dam catchments. I'm, I'm pulling them down, and I'm now I've got controlled traffic in place. I'm now putting um, a, a rotor catchment or a straight catchment, if you like. At the, I can get them in 22 metres, so it fits in with your system. Um, I'm taking fences off, you know, running that way. I'm putting them down creek lines, but I, but now the controlled traffic's there. I'm putting the fences in with confidence that they're. You know, I'm not going along with half bar widths and things like that. So it just it just helps out. Uh, traffic ability, I, I I think probably three years we could we could start seeing some improvement there. Where you know you notice in a wet year where you fall off your tracks and you you whenever you're pulling a machine out of the bog, it's just you you just try and get back onto those tracks. Um, high traffic trams for the first year I had the first couple of two or three years I had. Um, uh, I'm, I'm on a 10-inch system, so I actually just shifted the tines out slightly on my track so I can physically see them because I had a sprayer that was manual steer. Now I've got uh, a spreader with confidence of 36, and now I've got a, a sprayer that, that steers um, better. I've now got uh, high traffic and low traffic tram. So um, when it comes to renovating, for example, I'm you know I'm, I'm probably I'm, I'm going to find I'm going to probably spend more time and and investment, if you like, on those high traffic trams. Uh, deep ribbing has been mentioned, 85, 90% compaction um, is, you, is achieved in one pass, so if you're gonna deep rip, you wanna respect them. I don't do a lot of deep ripping, but we do that Broomhill trial that you saw from Wayne's actually on our farm. Um, uh, residue management, uh, that's not an opportunity, it's a, just, that's just a challenge. Um, uh, sh shielded sprayer. Um, I don't. Sh I don't use a shielded sprayer, but there's an opportunity there where um, it's already being done by either. Sh uh, as you can see there, I use chaff decks by putting chaff um, with an elevator back onto my tram lines. So with um, with shielded sprayers, we can. We now got the opportunity to to spray out those weeds. I don't do it. I, um, I'm, I'm just going to sacrifice too much crop, and but I, I, I don't have a great need to do it. I don't feel, um, and also into row spraying. Um, now we've got the accuracy. Um, seeding, into row seeding. I'll show you a few photos. Um, yeah, I, I, I now just with an offset hitch, 
Um, so all my, all my wheels are on the same tracks and I just offset my bar just with a physical offset hitch so it's reasonably inexpensive. Uh, just I offset it by, by half, so uh, five inches. So this, uh, this year was the first year we did that. Why did I do it? Just improved tra uh, trash flow, um, increased infiltration, probably better disease control. And, um, and then next year we'll go back to, the, to last year's cedar row. So I'm, I'm sort of expecting to um, have two, managing two rows if you like. And also I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to get more residue. And then I'm, I'm hoping I'll be like Rob Rewild and I'll say residue managers are a pain in the ass. Um, so yeah, this is a this is um, this is my original chaff system I built. I just slapped it on the the standard spinners. Um, it 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 restricted airflow a lot, and canola didn't go through it. Um, this is the modern system I've got, which many of you are probably familiar with. Um, they work. They're simple. They're relatively inexpensive when you can com when you compare to different chaff. Uh, um, weed systems um, and there's a auger extension I've just put on, it's cost me about six grand plus a 800 bucks worth of plastic that went on the end and then um, and oh, I forgot I had a pointer, oh yeah just there I want another about two or three hundred mils so I actually just put this metal band on there and squashed it up and that actually gave me another two hundred mils um, Oh yeah, so here's the chaff on the tracks. So that's what it looks like. That's actually about a 14 inch because they were, that, was, that photo was taken when they were a bit wider. Um, but for about 10% of my program, I don't put sheep over, if, if a paddock, if I feel a paddock's got too many weeds, I won't graze it over summer for two reasons. I want to respect those chaff lines. Um, they do, as Rob said, naturally just walk straight down the tracks. Um, and they do, they do graze through them and spread them. They don't spread them too much, but they do, they do spread them. And I also don't want to push my weed seeds into the ground. I want to keep them on the surface. Um, that way I know where they are. Um, I just put this photo up. This is just with RTK. Just that, those, two, those two photos, um, they're next door to each other. And I was just having a play for a couple of years, just nudging the RTK across. Um, admittedly, I've got an air drill. They're probably easier to, to steer in this regard compared to something like a DBS. I'm, I'm just talking to people, I, I, I get that um, feeling that the DBS may want to go into last year's furrow. Um, so yeah, that's just a pretty picture, typical of Twitter. That's um, they're you know they're probably the sexier ones. Um, uh, even with an offset, off, uh, an offset hitch on a 10-inch system is, is probably pushing the limit. It's very common over east and very common on a more like a 12, 13-inch system. Um, so there is times when it tends to, it never goes in the row, but it tends to want to just creep towards um, last year's row. So renovating. Um, so the... Uh, so oh, down here, look, these are the, this is more of a traditional renovator. They're two <coughs> offset discs that literally just sweep the top of the, the, the rut, um, you know, which is a you know, typical rut like this here. And, but the, the challenge with these is they, they don't leave it flat. I hear that they leave more of a rounded effect, so it's harder to keep the tool, like an SP spray, for example, on that track. They tend to want to fall off. And they're, so they're a bit more technical to drive, uh, but they're about 20,000 bucks, and the more sophisticated ones for about 40,000 uh, bucks. This is called a flat track for that reason. It leaves it flat. It's literally a 750 odd mil auger that, that does the same effect. It sweeps it into the center with these leveling bars, and then it's got these flotation tires that, that flatten it out. And that, 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 they'd leave it hard and flat. It's fantastic. Um, I've been told that that's probably, you know, you probably have to do that twice. Um, and then it's, it's, it's probably has a big effect. It's, I'm probably going to have to do it more often, but, um, and there's some areas I, I haven't done. Last year was a very wet year, so we had to tackle quite a lot. Um, 
And then I just found this picture here. I thought it was quite interesting. Someone's just slapped on a bit of offset, slapped on a bit of disc on a tine, and, and they're literally just running down the side and throwing the dirt in. I'm not suggesting you do that, though. Um, again, opportunities. There's, 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 there's all sorts of opportunities. I, I think this is actually an organic, organic farmer. He's actually physically harrowing uh, weeds through his crop. Um, and look, as Rob said, uh, growing crops out of season, there's opportunities to do that and even harvest them by maintaining a season. And I don't know if Quentin Knight's going to talk about this or not, but that's uh, literally burning, burning weeds within... Uh, within a crop. So all sorts of opportunities. Rob Rewald touched on many that I'm, I'm a long way off yet. Uh, look, just to, just to sum up uh, where to start, um, this is a good start today, talking to people, but I do suggest you plan. You can't plan soon enough. Um, an RTK system is a very cheap investment because you can start laying down your tracks and your outside laps and your boundaries. You can start doing that sooner than later because inevitably things change, areas want to move, you, you move tracks over time and, and that becomes pretty inefficient use of your funds if you're going to buy a big spray to put on your tracks that you don't even have. Um, work out what swaths you, with widths you want, of course. Um, it's a long-term decision. Metric, imperial. Uh, where to put the trams. Uh, for example, if I've got a creek there and a road there, and I've got four paddocks here, I, I've always shared the same line. I, I suppose one plan or <coughs> strategy I did have that potentially I may not have sheep in 10 years. So I was always open to, you know, fences coming out. And you know, four or five years in, you're on this controlled traffic for four or five years, and one day the spray driver will just call you up and say, my machine's not on the tracks. And I, I don't know why, it just happens. So if, you've, if you can share your, if you can have common run lines, it's, it's pretty, it's very handy. It, you, I always use common run lines because there's stuff up somewhere, you just got to drag in another line and then, you, and then you're back on track, so you don't have to stop the machine. My, my machine would stop more from software issues than mechanical issues. Just with people, people and yeah. Um, guidance systems, like I said I've always used John Deere but John Deere doesn't communicate with Trimble, there's compatibility issues, they do and they don't, you just got to understand it, that's all. Um, and the, you know, this, uh, yeah. Uh, the outside laps, again, I'll mention that again because it's been one of my biggest challenges I've worked out because there's been a lot of human error in implementing them. So I've worked out that actually doing an outside lap with my ute was the simplest way of doing it. But then I need to rely on human error, uh, humans, drivers to, to repeat the next laps um, and still we have problems. So all I would say is keep an open mind. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities out there. And uh, yeah, for future managers, it's not just you. There's someone's going to buy your farm or take your farm over. So make the right decision if, 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 if there is one. I don't know.